Alright, it is time. So, welcome back. We're going to do our Tomasa roundup here. Take a look at our characters and talk about who's the best, who's the worst. And uh, after that, we're going to decide whether or not we're going to the floating continent. So, uh, let's take a look. Let's start in order. So, we have Lorelei here. Um... So, in the, in the Mobliz roundup, I was talking about how Runic might get better as the game progresses. I still haven't used it that much, but, uh, you know, it's, it's still kind of hit or miss. It depends on the enemies, I suppose. Um, what's really pushed her over the edge is Mimic. Like, it just got better and better as the game went on, because everyone else got better and better. And, uh, you know, just being able to, just like I said in the Mobliz one, just being able to turn her into the best character on our team at any time... Uh, is amazing. Like, getting through the the Fire Eater, you know, having her mimic Strago's Quadra Slam and stuff, getting through um, the mountains by Aqua Raging and uh, Ice Doing and just having her mimic them for free was a godsend. So she's pretty much a, a good all-around character. I would say, just because she relies on someone else in the party uh, being good... Uh, I'd, I'd still put her slightly above average. I don't think she's our best character, probably, but I would put her above average for sure. Um, she still has trouble finding weapons she can equip. She's all, she's had the Forged since Narsh, so that's one way in which she, she falls short. Um, her magic power is good. Her defense is kind of ridiculous right now. It probably has to do with what I have equipped. Um, her magic defense is really good. And we're building up a magic list for her, so she can she can kind of utility that way. Like if if I have a character on the team that's throwing out magic and I want to do damage and mimic it, I can. Or if it comes around and uh, we get hit when I was about to mimic something, I can use her magic sp st spells to heal and stuff. So she's just all around a really really good character. Uh, although I don't know if she gets the MVP yet, we're gonna have to see. All right, moving on. We have Locke. Okay, so Locke in the beginning of the game was not great. Uh, having Dance was cool. Uh, again, hit or miss. He wasn't very good. Um, but since we got Espers, I mean, in the beginning it was a little dicey, like when I got Ice and stuff and realized his magic power was just so piss poor that, um, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't doing much damage even though he has X magic. But now that we have the level 2 spells and we've had him equipped with the Enhancer, for a while, and his magic power is about 40. Still not as good as Terra's. Still not as good as, I think, uh, Cell's either, but uh, good enough for our purposes. So I'm I'm really happy with the way he turned out. Right now, the, the thing we've been doing mostly is just throwing out X magic spells and then having Terra mimic it, and it's just been decimating stuff. So right now, he's a really, really good character. Again, I don't know where I'll put him on the list of best characters. We'll probably... We'll probably uh, do that at the end of the the, the roundup here, but uh, yeah, pretty pretty dang good character, and his magic list is getting huge, so he's only gonna get better. All right, Cian, still not great. Haven't run across any rages that have been fantastic for him to use. Armis is a terrible, terrible command. Um, just all in general, not. Uh, not a character that I want to use, probably, for the rest of the game. Um, now, here's the thing. I don't know if... I don't remember if I randomized at the beginning when I rolled this seed. There's a flag that randomizes character locations in the World of Ruin. So if I was to go to the World of Ruin, I could end up with him really early, and then we'd probably be kind of boned. But um, either way, you know, if I did go to the World of Ruin, there might be better rages there. Um, but as for right now, he's pretty bad. Uh, moving on, Edgar. He has been kind of the anchor of our team all game. Um, slot, while it is not reliable, when it does roll something, it's good. I mean, this man has trained Chocobos to kill on sight, and the Chocobos have done quite a lot of damage throughout the game. Uh, Seven Flush has been invaluable also. Um, we get H-Bomb every now and then. We've gotten a couple of random Esper summons. We've not gotten Bahamut or uh, Joker Doom, which it's not going to hurt my feelings. Um, 
But yeah, and there's been many times where he's failed a slot and it's actually been good for us because we needed a heal. So all around, he's he's a, an anchor. He is utility as hell. He's got good AoE with the slot. Um, jump, I haven't really used much. And his fight command, there's no reason to use the fight command when you have slot, in my opinion. Uh, especially considering I've had the running shoes on him for a while. So he is, he is really getting... A lot of throw-offs of slot lately um so yeah just a good character all around Sabin okay so he's been hit or miss as well but he's not a bad character um I barely use his fight command or R white but uh question mark R slow has has really helped like the fight with Ultros if Ultros hadn't been this is the thing. This is like the, the coin flip thing for him. If Ultros had been healed by Aurabolt, Saban would have been useless in that fight. But because he's not, or because he wasn't healed by it, uh, Saban just wrecked him. Just wrecked his whole face. Outside of breaking the world in Zozo, you know, he's he's been pretty consistent with the things he can kill with Aurabolt. But uh, yeah, he's still a toss-up for for all the time good uh okay flare so flare uh you know i haven't gotten to use her since the magitek factory blitz is good fire dance is hard to get to go off all the time uh but our bolt's great too um she's kind of just like a basic i can do damage kind of character she doesn't have a magic uh command which is which bodes badly for her um but She's doing okay as far as damage. I would not be surprised she gets replaced pretty soon. I don't even know if I'll I would take her to the floating continent if I went. Um, but she is doing decent enough for the purposes we needed her for. Early game, she was actually pretty good, but now she's starting to like plateau. So, all right. Uh, one of our newest characters, Drago. Okay, he rolled his vanilla command in lore. Um, kind of lame, as I said in the last episode, that that is a thing, because it's just dumb. It's a, he's not randomized. You know, he has sword tech, uh, which is randomized, and actually helped us get through Fire Eater, because none of his lore spells were doing damage, and Fire Eater was either didn't take damage, or was healed by all of our other spells. So, uh, the fact that he was able to sword tech was good, but the, the MVP of that fight was Terra because of mimicking sword tech. Um, but he does have a magic command, which could make him pretty good. Uh, he's a good character, but it stands to reason because he has his, his vanilla command. So I would just put him at an even five, you know, like you're just, you're just Strago. Anyway. Okay. And now we have dirt, which I haven't used her much yet because I just got her. Um, my ultimate curse continues that for some reason I roll her as a beginning sprite a lot. The other curse apparently now is that she ends up being really good. <laughs> Having our blitz is nice, but uh, you always run the risk of rolling spiraler or something dumb like that uh, and just having her leave your party, um, which is unreliable. If, if I'd have got a character in the beginning of the game that had our blitz, I would have used the crap out of it, but but all the other options we have right now, this late, she's not worth using. Um, she does have throw, though, and throw is good. Especially now that we have a decent amount of money and we can start buying those fire skeins and bolt edges and things. But, uh, and she has a magic command. Um, but I think she's going to be on the back burner. I don't think I'm going to use her. Again, if we had gotten our blitz early on a character, that would have been a great thing to have. But too many options now late game. So... She's good, but we're not using her. And Mac. Okay, so Mac is pretty dang awesome. I like his uh, what he rolled. I'm not ever going to use Sketch again because bears. But, uh, and it's not that useful of a skill anyway. Sandstorm, on the other hand, um, throwing out Sandstorm as a command is really nice because it's just real quick AoE. And then having Terra mimic it is like, okay, well, we've got two big hits on all enemies for mobs, like, right away. And he's got a way to fight against bosses, too, because of the magic stat. So, 
he's he's a good character, and he he might stay on the team. I don't know yet, but we're gonna have to see. Mog I haven't used at all. Uh, it's kind of interesting that he has morph, but morph is a very a very boring skill, and the only way that it's ever useful is if he has decent magic attacks. And I just have not put in the time to uh, give him any magic in his list, so he's kind of sat there. The scary part is, um, if I went to the World of Ruin and the characters are randomized, if I randomize getting him or Realm or somebody that doesn't have any magic learned, that could be really tough for us. Um, so, I don't know. He's he's very lukewarm to me. That's how I would describe him. And Gaw has sat here all game without doing anything, because he literally can only attack. <laughs> I mean control he can do, but it's not really going to do us any good. Um, most enemies are healed by their own stuff <laughs> in this. Um, and yeah, steel, we haven't had much of a use for steel either. We keep finding good enough items where we don't need to have to, we don't have to try and steal from stuff. However, he do, we do have tiger fangs now, so we could equip those on. Uh, either way, again, I'm very lukewarm on this character. Uh, then we have our two missing characters, so Shadow, still really, really good. Uh, Fire 3 Storm is ridiculous. Show of Law I didn't use at all last time I had him, but, because uh, I didn't need to. But, yeah, a another case of a very good skill for Terra to mimic, because she just is doing more damage than Shadow was with it. So, he was a great character. Um, and... He will be on the floating continent for us, which will be really good if we go there. And then, um, then we have General Leo. Who boy, General Leo rolled our miss, just like Cian did, and that's a shame. Uh, he had jump. That's how we got through Kefka, and his equipment wasn't the best. He did have a Moogle charm, which really made me mad that I couldn't take from him. Uh, would be great for the floating continent because that encounter rate is ridiculous. But yeah, General Leo is dead, and he was not good enough to live anyway. So, <laughs> um, but that's basically our, our wrap up there as far as the seed goes. It's been continuously uh, interesting and surprisingly easy in a lot of spots. Like the Fire Eater didn't give us any trouble again because Strago rolled lore. Um, you know, the Ultros fight wasn't bad. The only boss that really gave us a hard challenge in this run so far was Tunnel Armor. Um, so, we've been doing pretty good. Uh, as far as everything else, uh, palette-wise, everybody looks cool. I mean, uh, you get a lot of repeats here, like Locke, Cyan, Cells, and uh, Strago all seem to have rolled that pink-white brown combination, and then you have uh, Terra and Setzer kind of got the same uh, treatment, and then Gaw and Realm got the same treatment. Mog's the only one that looks different because he's a Moogle. And then Edgar and Sabin are the same colors because they're brothers. Uh, regardless, um, so I, I guess now it comes down to, this, to the decision. Are we continuing this run? Are we going to the Floating Continent and proceeding on to the World of Ruin? Um, the answer is yes, we are. <laughs> We're going to do it. Um, I'm very, very uh, excited about doing that, in fact. Um, we're going to go ahead and do this, team. This seems the best. Uh, but yeah, I definitely want to. I want to go ahead and try and beat this seed all the way through to the end. Um, but there's some things we have to do first. Uh, let's remove everything from everyone not in our party. We'll get make sure everybody has the best stuff they can have, except you. You need the enhancer for your magic power. Uh, there's got to be something else in here that gives magic power, right? The chocobo suit. Well, yeah, let's chocobo suit you. Okay, and then, wait, uh... Either the yeah okay so the gold shield lowers my speed by one and gives me my magic power up so that's great a great set of equipment for him um, 
Okay, he's got the wing edge now. Okay, so the wing edge is good for him. He can equip the Hawkeye. How did I not realize that before? Um, okay, so here's the thing. Wing edge is great. Uh, Hawkeye can be great if it's hitting flying enemies. And, now that I think about it, when we go to the floating continent, before we even get down there, there's going to be a lot of enemies we fight in the air, and the Hawkeye is going to be being thrown. So, we might want to use that. If it c turns out it's not doing that much damage, we'll switch. Um, the Hawkeye is kind of an early weapon, so it's not going to be super powerful. You know what? Look at those stats from the Wing Edge. We're definitely just going to equip the Wing Edge. Screw it. Yeah. Um, if we had the Sniper, I probably would have put it on him. But we have the Hawkeye, which is the worst sniper, like, a worse sniper. So, yeah, we're going to stick to the Wing Edge. He can also equip the Apple Weapon, but uh, we're not going to worry about that for now. And he's got the Maneater. He can use Rods. Uh, he's got the Force Shield, too, which no one else can equip. Which is kind of nuts. Uh, I don't think anyone else can equip it anyway. Oh, she can equip it. Okay. It's just that the crystal shield's better. Okay, so we want the gold shield and the enhancer on him still. I don't think there was anything else that gave us more magic power. Nope. Yeah, the crystal shield's just better, so he's gonna have the force shield. That's a good call. And let's take a look at some espers that we can learn for everybody. Um... He's finished Bismarck, so he's got Cure 2. He needs some uh, some damage. So we're going to throw... Play Carbuncle on him? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, so he doesn't have a magic command. Um, he's still learning Osmos from Shiva. I think something else is teaching Osmos. Yeah, let's put it on. Let's put Unicorn on it. It's less, but he's going to be learning Remedy as he goes. Uh, and as far as... Terra, she's still learning Imp, which I've decided we're going to let her do. <laughs> because so many things are teaching us, are, are Imping us right now, and I am so sick of it. So, so that's good. But as I said, we have some things to do. So those things include going back to the Returner hideout and seeing what was in the monster in a box at the beginning of the game that I couldn't beat. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, there was a monster in a box in here that I couldn't beat. Same as in South Figaro. But now I have a feeling we're gonna destroy it. It was in this pot. And the reason I wanted to come back to this one is because it's Spectre. And Spectre is in a monster in a box later in the game. Uh, in vanilla. And he actually gives us something. So we're going to see, and that's not going to kill him, he's a ghost. And we're going to see if he actually gives us something here. Because I'm interested to know. A sandstorm, and we're going to mimic the sandstorm. So he did 219. Watch what Terra's does. 373. Little bit more. She tends to do more damage with everyone else's skills than they do when she mimics them. <laughs> Alright, let's see what we got. Okay, we got a flame saber. See it? Yeah, that's better than the forged, and she can equip it, which is awesome because outside of the Atma weapon, the flame saber has always been like Terra's signature weapon to me. She's always been fire elemented. Like, innately, she's a fire person. <laughs> In my opinion. So that's cool. That would have been nice to have early, uh, but we, there's an, almost no way we would have beaten that Spectre at that time. We had no skills. So let's, uh, from here we need to check all of the places that uh, the Empire opened up from our awesome dinner. Uh, South Figaro, there was also a monster in a box that we couldn't defeat. So we're going to go take care of that too. I don't think this one's actually going to give us an item, sadly. But, uh, we can still beat it. 
Uh, yeah, it was at the bottom of the old man's house. That's right. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to give us an item, but we can still beat it just to beat it. <laughs> and it back attacked us from the chest. That's weird. Sandstorm. We're probably not even going to have to worry about losing this at all. Sandstorm's probably going to clear him. Yeah, that's a death attack. Yep. Yeah, no, no item, which is fine. Okay, uh, now we need to go to Doma and loot the hell out of it. Because again, that was opened up thanks to the Empire. chest could be a monster in a box. Let's go check the one in Sian's room first. Magical brush, okay, useless. Oh, yeah, duh. It's down here. This is the room right here. Phoenix down. Another dark hood. We found a lot of those dark hoods. Nothing in the pots. I think that's it for Doma, honestly. I don't remember there being any more chests. Yeah, no. Uh, unless I'm forgetting a door somewhere. I think that was it, though. If I'm not mistaken, in the vanilla game, that gets you a... Uh, a black belt? Am I remembering that correctly? Correct me in the comments if that's the case. Yeah, there's nowhere else to go in here, sadly. That I'm aware of. Yeah, no. Okay. So, let's get out of Doma. That's all the places that we can check that have opened for us. Now, a couple more interesting things we can do here. Uh, at least one more. I need to go to the Triangle Island and see if Intanger is here or if they've replaced Intanger with something. Uh, either way, whatever it is, I hope gives us 10 uh, magic points. That would be great. I know this forest so damn well. Oh my god. So, just about every playthrough I've done of Final Fantasy VI... Um, I have spent the entirety of my time before it. Oh yeah, these are going to be easy. They're early game enemies. Um, I spent all of my time before the Floating Continent, just about every game that I've played, uh, going here and fighting Intangers until every single person that I have had all, uh, had a full magic list of all the espers I had at the time. Okay, this is, this is it. Ow. Holy crap. Okay, so, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna Phoenix down her, and I'm gonna see if Doom works on this thing. It should. And it will probably have a death attack like Meteor. Oh my god. Oh, it died. It doesn't have a death attack. 15 magic points. Okay. We might be hanging out here for a while. All things considered, that's a lot of magic points. Um, and it's given us a ton of money. So, or was it a ton of money or a ton of EXP? I think it was both. So, we're going to hang out here for a minute, get some of our stuff learned up, and hopefully by the end of that, we'll have so much dang money that we'll be able to actually buy uh, tents to use. Because tents are ridiculously expensive, and I don't know why. Okay, so we need to have somebody ready to... Yeah, let's... Life. And 
then Doom. Oh wait, let's let's wait. Okay. So let's life and life. Probably gonna have to life somebody else in between it. We need to get back to Thomas's turn so he can doom. Okay, she just stopped. Alright, that was a good turn there. Okay, so... Good. We got it good. So, life, and then doom. So everybody should get what they're supposed to get from this fight. I certainly hope it wasn't a fluke that he didn't do a death attack. Because Entenger did Medio. Usually. Okay. Good amount of EXP, 15 magic points, 475 GP, that's not a lot. So, he's done with Garbuncle then, no, Rasp, Rasp is still a thing. Did I get any sprint shoes? No. Okay, so let's, I was gonna say, if I do, if I put the sprint shoes on, it teaches Rasp, so I could just throw it on him and be done with it, but we'll keep it on there, there for now. Stray, okay, she's still working on that. He's still working on Remedy because it's going at 1%. Alright, so, yeah, as long as he's appearing, we're going to keep fighting here. If it starts to get ridiculous where he's not showing up at all, I'm just going to leave. So it seems silly to not uh, be working on cells right now. I'm actually thinking about putting her in over somebody just because she is going to need some stuff to make it through the world of Ruin if she's our starting character, unless it randomizes who that is, too. Okay. Alright, let's wait for the next attack. Alright, good. It was just a grip belly, so life and doom. Well, crap. I did not expect him to get another turn before then, so Max missing out on some some magic points here. <laughs> I think what I'll do for now, since I'm not taking her probably not taking her to the floating continent. I'll, uh, I'll heal up real quick. And take Edgar off the thing. Actually, no. It doesn't matter because Cells does not have a magic uh, command, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I was going to say build up the uh, build up her magic, but she doesn't have a command for it. So she is in Blitz and, Blitz and Sketch for the rest of the game. So... Not really going to matter. Leveling her might be a good idea, but I'm not totally worried about it. Um, so yeah, let's do this a couple more times and see if we can at least fill out the, the really hard to learn uh, espers. Okay. Let's wait for the next thing. Alright, well he went down. See if we can outlast this to get her back around to Thomas. Okay, you stopped her, so she's not going to be able to life anybody, but he will. Unless he gets hit while he's trying. Oh, Mac, Mac went down again. That's okay. Oh, red cap. Who can equip that, if anyone? Anyway. 
she can, but it's not really great for her. Yeah, red cap's looking not as good as everything else here. Alright. I'm not going to worry about healing because people are going to die no matter what. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you done yet? No, you're not even close. Neither are you. And Matt keeps dying, so he's not close either. What is this? What are you? Please don't be anything spooky. I'm just gonna try and double pearl you. off of that. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump him over to something else. He's got Fire 2 Ice too. Let's go ahead and get him Doom also. Alright. Oh, of course she would hit him. Of course she would hit her. Yeah, I don't have a way to make us impervious to physical damage right now, or else I'd be doing it. Okay. We're not going to be upset about that. Well, yeah, we will. We can bring him back anyway. We got into our menu fast enough. Okay, good. I thought he was going to get a chance. Okay. Again, we'll do we'll do a few more of these until he stops appearing uh, consistently. If we keep getting crap enemies, we won't worry about it. Oh, there he is again. We got a preemptive this time. So all we have to do is doom him. <laughs> okay, well, Mac learned doom. That's cool. He's got another thing to learn off of that, right? Yeah, safe. Anything else to teach safe? Just go on. Okay, he's popping up a lot. That's good. do we want to learn here? Shell Warp. I'm trying to think of the best way to use my time. Okay, she needs Volt 2 off of Carbuncle. Unicorn's done. Yeah, he's almost entirely done with his spell list here. Break and Vanish he needs. And Mac can use a lot of stuff. Just give him Mad One. That's going to be cleared out quick. I think we'll at least uh, get the spell list filled out for these three characters, as long as he keeps appearing like this. Nice, Mac. I don't think he's done with that. I think there was one more, yeah, drain has to happen, too. Time to 
Thomas isn't done yet. Wait, is he done? No, he needs break. That's right. And she's working on that. Yeah, okay. Whoops, I stepped off the forest and ran into these stupid things. So there's an old sketchbook I have somewhere where I got so pissed off at how rare it was for Intanger to show up that I started tallying off how many Leaf or Darkwind fights I got into, because that was the other enemy group that you could run into besides Intanger. Um, and yeah, I got so frustrated that I tallied them all off. It was some kind of ridiculous number. There were like 50s or 60s of Leaf or Darkwinds to every like five Intangers. So after the tallying thing, and I finally got everyone's friggin' magic list filled out, uh, I knew you'd ha attack him. I friggin' knew it. Um, once everyone's magic list was uh, filled out, I, like, drew Triangle Island and had a bunch of ranting crap all over the... Stop it! All over the page about how much I hated the island and I hated Leavers and Dark Winds. And above Triangle Island was a giant... A nuclear warhead falling towards it. Like, I hope I never come back here again. Stop killing Thomas. I need him alive. Well, Mac has Doom now, so he could technically do it. We just have to make sure we get a... I really just want him alive so he can get the frickin' experience. So we're going to wait and see what his next attack is. Hopefully it's not on Thomas, so then we can just X-Magic Life Doom. As long as we have the... Yeah, we have the MP for it. It's not on... Good lord, man. He, the, he knows the threat. And he knows that it's Thomas. Alright, we're gonna wait again. See what his next attack is, see who we have to bring up. You have a 1 in 4 chance, don't hit Thomas. Okay, good. So, we just need to do... Nice try. Cleared out somebody's list. The carbuncle's done? Yeah. Alright, what else do you need? Uh, Palador. You're still learning Break. You're done with Madwin. Uh, let's throw Karen on you. Okay, we actually need to go back to the airship to heal because Thomas's MP is low. Not worried about the HP so much, because we just keep dying anyway, but MP would be nice. Move, Sian. Jeez. Is this the shop where the tents were 3,000 or 4,000? 4,000. Good lord. Let's buy 10 of them. Also, the other thing I forgot to mention about dirt which makes her a worse character, is yeah, she has throw, but I have the ability to give anyone on my team that command by sacrificing their fight command and equipping them with a relic ring. Yes, it will make it so that they don't get, uh, they don't get fight as a command and they can't get healed, but still. Had a feeling. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, that's gonna be a stop. That's not what I meant by stop it, dude. Oh, Remedy doesn't heal stop? That sucks. Could have sworn it did. 
Okay, well this is looking bad all of a sudden. We might just have to cast Doom to get out of this fight. And not worry about anybody getting a... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're annihilated. Jeez, old Pete's. That was a series of unfortunate events there. I'm sure I saved after healing and all that, right? Yeah, okay, because she has Palador equipped. Alright, let's try this again. See if Terra can get a Doom out before he gets another attack. Probably not. Mm -hmm. She did. Wow. All right. Not bad. Oh, did Mac just learn Imp uh, naturally? Is that what I saw? Yeah, cool. So he doesn't have to go through uh, learning Stray, which is nice. That's a long grind to get Imp. Pretty glad that happened. Natural magic is nice. Kill who you're gonna kill already. Do it! Life and do. <laughs> yeah, the X magic command is really, really convenient. Good coffee. Alright, you got break, so we can switch some stuff over. She's still learning Pearl. Alright, he's just about done. He needs Imp. Let's give him Ramu while, uh... Um, instead of Imp right now. Uh, Karen, he needs Ice and Mute still, and she is, of course, still learning Pearl, right? Pearl and Dispel. Alright. Do your thing. Show me who's dead. So yeah, without X magic, we'd probably be losing one character every time we fought this thing, no matter what. Which is kind of how Intanger went, because anyone who cast Doom on Intanger got hit by the Meteo afterwards, um, and just died. Or it could miss sometimes, and you could be lucky, but it almost always hit and killed whoever cast Doom. So, yeah, Warp is one. That sucks. Okay, he's done with Corinne. Unicorn will teach Remedy. Let's throw Zone Seek on him. That should be fast. I realize maybe I should have done this grind, uh... Done this grind a little, um, off-screen. Well, nice. All you gotta do is doom him. Nice dodge again. I didn't think he'd get another attack. So, Thomas's casting time is slow. I think it's because it's X magic and he has to learn take a little bit of extra time to uh, do everything. Because it's two spells. But, uh, you know. So, warp. He's still on slow too, alright. Yeah, I should have probably done this off-screen, but at the same time, I'm not going to be like every other friggin' YouTuber and just cut out all of my grinding. That's dumb. I can talk enough and talk about the game, and grinding is fun. I like to experience everything with you guys. I cut out the, the money grind because that took a long time. This is... This is... This is what I was talking about with grinding before, um, when I mentioned, you know, seeing your progress. 
uh, as you're grinding. This is one of those. Like, you get to see what you're learning and how fast you learn it. That's really fun for me. Like, it's just one of those things that's that's dumb to others, really fun to me. We're also getting a nice EXP grind, or level grind while we're at it. And this guy's showing up all the time. There could be... I don't know. Again, I don't know the finer points of this randomizer. It could be that I'm getting lucky, or it could be that they made it easier for this enemy to show up here just for the grinding purposes of getting spells. Regardless, it's working out well. I know I'm saving in between every fight, but that's because he can wipe us pretty easily if things go according to his plan. But yeah, seeing the progress like of what you're actually doing is uh, really fun. We're going to double pearl and then we're going to... What? Okay, we're good. We're going to mimic it. If I was crazy, I would try and uh, get Mirager off of this, because, as you can see, he's at near fatal. They all three are, but Thomas is at 9 HP. I think, again, don't quote me on this, I think that the lower HP you're at, the better chance you're going to get a near fatal attack to go off, and I would love to see Mirager. It's not even that impressive of a skill, it's just fun to try to get. Let's try it. Let's try it with everybody. Since we're, we got uh, crap enemies here anyway. Oh, nobody got their near fatal. That's okay. It's pretty rare. And I like how it's so secretive in this game. Like, I discovered it on accident. Mirager was the first one I ever saw. And I'm like, what was that? You know, it was really cool. Didn't get one there either. Looks like the uh, Aglio doesn't want to appear anymore. Having a lot of trouble showing up. Mac might actually fill out his list before Thomas does, because Thomas still has to learn Imp. Mac learned it naturally. If they don't get their desperation attacks, th these things are going to get sandstormed, so it's fine. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I wish I knew the formula for how often desperation attacks happen. So yeah, all you folks out there that thought that Final Fantasy VII was the first game that had limit breaks, you were wrong. And I kind of, I was talking to my buddy Jared the other night about this, um... I really think the idea of having desperation attacks like this ooh, nice Zephyr game, um, is way cooler than making it a core part of the game. Like, you look at FF7, FF9, FF8 even, with the limit breaks and trance and stuff, it's like, here's your gauge, you know exactly when you're going to get it, you base your entire game around being able to do it, and it's like, that's pretty lame that you, that like, you just have access to it anytime you want. Like, come on, dude. It's so easy in FF7 just to uh, use a hyper on all of your characters. Not even give a crap about missing with regular attacks. Just use your hyper so you build your limit gauge up really, really fast when you take damage and then just let loose. It was, it was, it made the game trivial. The game was trivial enough anyway. FF7 is not a hard game. <laughs> kill who you're gonna kill. There we go. And it's also not... Alright. You guys ready for my full controversial opinion here? FF7 is one of my 
least favorite Final Fantasy games. Um, and it's not some stupid retro gamer rant. It's literally about the game itself. Like, number one... Well, number one, I'm going to close this window because someone's mowing. <laughs> number two... Okay, so... FF7 got a lot of hype, which I understand why. Um, it was the first 3D Final Fantasy, you know, came out on PlayStation. It was cool, the story was neat, uh, the characters were memorable, stuff like that. But, I don't even know where to begin. It took what FF6 started, because FF6 really did start it, um, and it made things... I mean, they kind of melded it well. They melded it well in this game. Uh, for, like, the, the typical RPG style of, of medieval stuff and technology. You know, this was... Or magic technology. This was a cool way to do it. Um, FF7 literally ran with it and just made everything into a... a uh, like a futuristic steampunk... Uh, man versus technology... Crap, Earth versus technology and cra oh shit, ran out of MP. Um, and it was like, <laughs> you guys are pushing it too hard. And then the Sephiroth thing, of course, with everyone's obsessed with Cloud's past and Sephiroth and everything. It's like, it was cool. Don't get me wrong. The whole thing about you know Sephiroth being or Cloud being like a Sephiroth clone and. All that stuff when really he was like just a soldier or not even in soldier but just like a foot soldier for Shinra and this whole time he's acting like he's some badass when really he's a whiny bitch you know um stuff like that and the characters a lot of the characters were good like again I'm not gonna say that FF7 isn't good it's a fantastic game I bought the remake and I played that too and I love the nostalgia and I know a hell of a lot about FF7 but as far as the hype for the game that it gets all of the, you know, Cloud is the freaking poster boy for Final Fantasy. Like, dude, come on, man. Just because he's got a big dumb sword and spiky hair, you know, that... And that, I know that's not ex the full reason why, but here's the thing. That's fine. Make him the poster boy, right? Say, this is the face of Final Fantasy, and put fucking Cloud and Sephiroth up there making out. Whatever. But... Why do you have to put Cloud in everything? Why do you have to not give any kind of credit to any of the games that came before in the same ways that you do with Seven? You, like, they milk the crap, and I understand money, but they milk the crap out of that series. And they're still doing it. Like, they're milking it for everything that it's worth. And it's... It's like they don't they don't care about their old work. Once FF's like Final Fantasy didn't exist until Final Fantasy VII hit the scene. That's the way it feels, and it makes me upset. Because yeah, I was excited for Final Fantasy VII. I bought that game as soon as it came out, and I played the crap out of it because I love these games on Super Nintendo. And I'm like, dude, 3D Final Fantasy, this is gonna be awesome. And I went through that phase where I really really liked it. I didn't think it was the best Final Fantasy ever when I first played it. I thought it was cool, but I didn't freak the hell out. And here's the thing. There is a side effect for Final Fantasy players that I've noticed, alright? I feel like your favorite Final Fantasy is always the is always going to be the first one you ever played. And in my case, this is true. That's why Final Fantasy IV will always be my favorite Final Fantasy. It was it was the first one that I played and knew the hell, what the hell I was doing. I played Final Fantasy I on regular Nintendo when I was really, really little, and I didn't know what I was doing. So, that technically doesn't count as playing a Final Fantasy. But, playing through one, FF4 was the first one that I, I rented it every single week from Showtime Video. I just kept playing it and playing it and playing it. All, it was all I thought about when I was in school and stuff was getting home to play it. And, it was a great experience. Like, so that one will always be my favorite. So I kind of... I kind of uh, sympathize with the people who love Final Fantasy VII because it was a lot of people's first Final Fantasy game. Like, a lot. Nobody really heard, like, only the, the real big nerds and shut-ins like me, like, played the Final Fantasy games on Super Nintendo, you know? It was, 
you were kind of a big fat nerd if you played RPGs when I was a kid, you know? And not a lot of people had played them. You found your, like, little clique of people who did, and it's like, you guys are awesome, but everyone else, no one else played it. They were on the Mega Mans and stuff, which I understand. I played Mega Man too, but, um... You know, they were on the other kinds of video games. It was really hard, and you if you really want to get obscure, no one I really knew played Chrono Trigger either, except for me and my friend Jeff. You know? Um, you know, everybody was a, was a, a Zelda Mega Man style gamer. But, uh, either way, that out of the way. Uh, when Final Fantasy VII hit the scene, it was so hyped that even the people who didn't play Final Fantasy wanted to play it because everyone was talking about how good it was. And... It was good, but it's, it, it was a product of the time for why it got the hype it received, you know? It wasn't, it wasn't that it was a fan-fucking-tastic game, it was that it came out at the right time. And now, <coughs> they're just preying on nostalgia by releasing all of these things with Cloud, and I'm like, Cloud's in Smash? Really? Cloud? Like, ugh. Anyway. Um... Yeah, that's, that's just where I'm at on it. It's not obviously not my favorite Final Fantasy. My favorite Final Fantasy is 4, and Final Fantasy 7 falls pretty low on my list of favorite Final Fantasies. I mean, and that's including, like, that's not me just saying, you know, that's not another retro gamer thing. Like, I only like the Super Nintendo and Nintendo Final Fantasy. No, it's nothing like that. Uh, my list of favorite Final Fantasy games like, favorite Final Fantasy main series games, probably goes, uh, 4, 6, 5, 9, 7, 8, and then you'd probably include all of the, uh, um, the regular Nintendo ones. So, 9... Uh, you know, no, actually, the regular Nintendo ones are better than 8. Don't get me started on 8... Eight's worse than seven, quite obviously. But uh, yeah, my list of favorite Final Fantasy games is probably a lot different from other people's because so many people. Not only do they put Final Fantasy VII at the top of their list for favorite Final Fantasy game, they put it at the top of their list for favorite game ever. And it's not that good, man. The one thing that it did that I will forever give it credit for is that the Materia system is brilliant. That's basically it. The customization op options with Materia was awesome. As far as everything else, it was kind of... Um, I got lukewarm feelings on it, you know? I have my reasons. And then I also have my... What, my freaking problems with the remake, too. There's a lot of them. That, it just... But I'm not getting into that either. And if it weren't for the fact that Final Fantasy Tactics isn't a main series game, it would be my favorite Final Fantasy on the PlayStation. But it's not a main series game. So I can't say that. Um. <laughs> anyway, there was something else I was getting at, too, that I forget what I was saying. I forget what I was going to talk about. I think I was, talk I was just still talking about it 7, and I was going to mention something about it, another thing I didn't like. But yeah, it, again, it was just a product of when it came out, and it's, I understand. But, you have to look at the core of a game and not just, like, the hype that it received. I don't think it's, I don't think that that game's worth getting... It, it's basically like Squaresoft is... I don't want to be this guy that says this, but it's like Squaresoft had success with Final Fantasy VII, so they just keep thinking about that, and, like, they're jerking themselves off with every new iteration they make of, like, a nod to it. It's like, hey, remember when we did this? Uh, hey, everybody, remember FF7? Remember how good FF7 was? It's like, stop it, guys. <laughs> just, just stop. It's, it's it's very old, it's tired, and 
you know, again, it's the only game on PlayStation, like, Final Fantasy VII, all these terrible, you know, opinions I have about it, it's still the only game on PS4 that I downloaded, like, I, I downloaded on PS4 and played it there, too, uh, it's still the only game that I've platinumed on PlayStation 4, like, it's not to say that I don't love it, I just don't love love it, like any other person you talk, and, and that's, that's probably the worst part, it's not even about the game at this point, you know what it's about, it's about the fans of it, they are quite annoying, it's like Pantera fans, like I love Pantera, that's an awesome band, they're cool as shit, but if you talk to a Pandera, Pantera fan, you, you kind of want to rip your, your own ears off to not have to hear them anymore. Um, they're just obnoxious, and that's kind of how I see Final Fantasy VII fans. Like, it's the same, it's the same thing with people who, uh, are, you know, uh, Ocarina of Time forever and ever best game ever made fans, you know. I love Ocarina of Time, too. I loved getting it. I love playing the crap out of it. I still play it. It's not my favorite Zelda. <laughs> you know? People have differing opinions, I understand, but and I can make my opinion about how I feel about their opinion, and how they choose to convey it. Because, good lord, I don't think there's any video game fan more obnoxious than Final Fantasy VII fans, unless you include things like Call of Duty and Fortnite, but I, I'm not even including those in, in the description I'm using for video gamers. Um, but yeah, like, in the RPG spectrum, Final Fantasy VII fans are And I'm sure I'm annoying in a lot of ways for the things I like. But that's fine, you can have that opinion about me. And in the meantime, Thomas just cleared out his Esper list. And now I'm going to equip Carbuncle on him forever so he gets magic power up from his levels. Let's see. Let me go up and heal. Or some other unpopular opinions I can throw out here. Just make all the enemies we can. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What's a fantastic game that I didn't like? There's quite a few of them. Uh, oh yeah, let's j let's jump into the Zelda spectrum. I don't like Breath of the Wild, and that's not because I'm a Zelda formula purist at all. It's literally the game is is just bad. Okay, so let me let me explain. So they give you a big a big world, a big sandbox world to explore. Awesome. Fantastic. You got a million different kinds of weapons you can use. Pretty cool too. Um by the way, every time you swing a weapon, you swing it twice and it explodes. And then you gotta hunt down other weapons that are crappier than the one you just got. So you finally find a cool weapon that you like, you're not gonna use it because you don't want it to friggin' break. Right? Shit like that. And then I'm talking to a friend of mine who assures me, oh no, there's there's one weapon in the game that that will stop you from having to go through, you know, going and hunting down weapons to carry with you all the time that can't be broken. And I said, oh, let me guess, it's the Master Sword, right? And I said, yeah. I said, okay, so perfect. So to avoid the the annoyance of breaking weapons, right? Uh, I have to be forced in my big fat sandbox world explorer game where I should be allowed to do whatever I want. I have to move the story forward to get rid of that annoyance. So you're basically telling me what I have to do in order to not have to worry about that. Instead of just saying, oh, well, here's this place you can go to to repair weapons or to upgrade them so they can't break and stuff like that. That's what they're saying. You you go and get the Master Sword so you always have a weapon that can't break. 
and then what's the point after that? You know, what's the point of using other weapons? Obviously, they'll probably be more powerful than the Master Sword eventually, some of them. But what's the point if they're going to break? You know, stuff like that. Uh, the other stuff, like, just the, con the controls and things. Non-intuitive to me. I never really liked the Switch controller that much anyway, but, like, the controls are, are non-intuitive to me. Counterintuitive, and to the worst degree, like, I don't know, it, just everything you have to do to cook, and it's like, eh, really? I gotta do, I gotta grab my stuff, put them in a thing, put them in a pot, light the pot on fire, it's like, I understand you're trying to immerse me in a world, but really just making me annoyed. Like, in crafting games, like, if you have crafting, that's another thing, like, crafting is never too terribly fun to me in a game, but if you have crafting in a game, it should be intuitive and it should be easy, right? You shouldn't have to go through three or four menus and choose all these freaking items just to craft, right? And it, it, with varying success and failure, you know what I mean? A game that did crafting well was No Man's Sky, in my opinion. Like, that made sense. You get recipes, and you're able to... Like, any game that gives you recipes to do stuff is fine. But, like, when you really just have to, like, uh, tinker around with crap, it's really annoying. <laughs> Anyway, there's that, and then there's the fact that it's a big open-world adventure, right? And, yeah, there's a lot of exploration, but the things you find aren't as interesting as was advertised. You know, like, the most that you're going to find... Dang it, he died. The most you're going to that I found running around is you find freaking moblin camps, and you mess up moblins, and you get a treasure, or you go in a cave, and there's a treasure box, and you fight mobs... It's like, you're not finding interesting locales, right? You're not finding things that, like... You're not doing it in the way that, that like, Red Dead Redemption 2 did, where you find something interesting, and you actually say something about it, it looks cool, uh, your character draws it in their notebook and stuff, and it's marked on the map forever, it's just a neat little spot that has some lore to it that you get to think about, you know? Uh, again, I only played the game for like five hours, so there might have been something like that, but it didn't hold my interest or attention long enough to even get to that point. By the time I was off of, what is it, the, the tutorial area, by the time I was off of there and I got the, the glider, I was totally uninterested, disinterested in the whole experience. And I found myself just being mad that I spent $70 on it, you know? So, yeah, Breath of the Wild, not a fan. A lot of games, a lot of Zelda games I am a fan of. That one, no. And that's another case of hype. You know, a lot of people hyped it up. It's, oh, it's on the Switch, it's a new Zelda game, new console, boom, here it is. And people are like, oh my god, it's so good, game of the year. And it's like, are you guys serious? <laughs> if I would have picked a game of the year on the Switch or a game that was really good and unforgettable to me. Uh, dude, Fire Emblem Three Houses was amazing. I loved that game. Loved it. Best game I've played on the Switch since I got it. Easily. All the customization, all the random... Uh, all the three different houses, the replayability and stuff. The only thing that I was a little upset about was the weapon triangle went away, but whatever. I understand why they did that, but regardless, like, it was, it was a really good game. Like, I don't even want to get into how good it was, because I'll miss something, but the characters were great, the fights were great, it was a little too easy. That's the, that's the one complaint I would have. The game was a little too easy. Um, and I'm the type that now, since the first Fire Emblem game I ever played was Fire Emblem 4 Genealogy of Holy War on my computer uh, years ago, when I got it on emulator and got a really, really nasty English ROM patch from somebody trying to translate it, uh, that's still my favorite Fire Emblem. But I've gone through all those Fire Emblems and dealt with permadeath for so long that when they give me the option in uh, this game, in, in 
like three houses or some of the later firearms turn off per permadeath, I just do. Because honestly, all permadeath does that I've realized is makes you reset the game. <laughs> like it doesn't, it, it's not, it's the illusion of difficulty, you know? It's like you just lost a character forever, so now you're gonna have to reset the game and do the map all over again because you lost that character. That's, that's it. You don't move on with permadeath if you're anything like me. So character dies, you just redo the whole map. So having that turned off is, is much better for me. That and being a, a stupid adult and having to do a lot of stuff, you don't have a lot of freaking time to play a game where you're going to lose a character and have to reset, you know? Um, plus, again, I paid my dues in all the past Fire Emblems where it didn't have that, that feature, so I'm over it. But that was an example of a well-known game series trying a new formula that worked out. Like, that formula works, and it was fun. <laughs> uh, my opinion, like... No, I don't want to change party members when I'm doing it. What am I doing? Uh, in my opinion, you know, the the whole... Uh, turning Zelda into an open-world thing... Uh, it is still a Zelda. It's called Legend of Zelda, right? But to me, it's not like what Zelda is at its core, I guess you would say. And I don't expect anyone to totally agree with me. Like, I'm not... I'm not one of those people who is afraid of change, but I am one, I am a person who knows what I like. And I like my Zelda to be certain ways, right? It's not that I'm a purist or say that it can't be good if it's any other way. I'm just saying it's not the, the it's not my preference for what a Zelda is, right? So, no harm done there. Um again, it's an opinion on the internet, so lambast me all you like. Uh, but, anyway, yeah, uh, the, the Fire Emblem Three Houses formula change of, like, the training and getting skills and stuff, and the running around a base and doing stuff like that, very good formula change, and I very much liked it. If they did, did it that way forever, from this point forward, I would be okay with that. <laughs> Alright, let's think of another unpopular opinion. I've almost got my spell list filled out. I don't know how long I've been playing. Let me check. Eh, 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 eh. Cursor, please. About an hour and 12 minutes. Okay. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll finish out these spell lists eventually. And, uh, I'll think of one more unpopular opinion, and I don't know what... I don't know what I'll use here. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, man. I wouldn't really consider this an unpopular opinion, because I'm sure a lot of people agree with me. Um... So, Pokemon games, right? I hate how all of your rivals now are your buddies. Like, sorry, dude. No. That ain't how it works. Like, your rivals are supposed to be mean, nasty, forcing you to try and get better instead of, let's help each other get better. That's really dumb. There's no better rival than Gary in the first game. Well, Blue. Whatever. Uh, he literally... He literally just shit-talks you the whole game. And it feels really good when you beat him. <laughs> like, there's no payoff for when you beat The only payoff for beating the, the quote-unquote rivals now uh, in Pokemon games is... I hate you so much I can't wait to kick your ass because you're so annoying and not my friend. Right? But it's not the same spirit as when you're killing you know, blue in the first game. <laughs> in the first game, when you beat Do when you beat blue, it's like, yes, I told you I was better than you. You shut your mouth, and it's like, 
I'll smell you later. <laughs> It was just good, and he was always a challenge. It wasn't like he was easy. That's the other pro thing I'd probably mention, is that the freaking enemies are too easy in the new Pokemon games. Like, you're never gonna have an epic battle like you have with freaking Cynthia. Oh my god. That lady. Hardest freaking Elite Four champion there's ever been. And it was an epic fight. Anyway, how close are we here? She still needs Unicorn. I think that Mac just got done with Unicorn. Yes. Pop unicorn on her. So this whole episode, sorry, I'll, I'll put a tag in it so people know if they want to skip it or not. Uh, but this whole episode is pretty much going to be grinding. So I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a disclaimer up, I guess. Uh oh, dang it. Our preemptive attack didn't matter. That's all right. We don't need to pick up Will because, uh. He doesn't have spells to learn anyway. He's just getting ESP off of this. Um, so, yeah, this whole episode's going to be grinding. It's going to be grinding and unpopular opinions, plus the uh, Tomasa roundup and everything, and the answer about whether or not we're going to the floating continent, which the answer, again, is yes. We're going to go ahead and do this whole playthrough. Um, <laughs> just to see what the World of Ruins like and see what we're in for. Uh... But yeah, I'll make sure I tag this video that it's a grinding video, and if nobody wants to watch it, it's fine. But if you want to hear my stupid, unpopular opinions, then you might want to watch. And I knew he'd die. I knew it. I knew he would get hit. I called that shit. I'm going to pick up Will just for another target for this thing to try and hit, so that Thomas isn't, there has less of a chance of being killed. <laughs> Let's see, who you hitting? Life and I still like him to be up to get the EXP. Also, while we were grinding, I noticed we devised a new blitz. Um, and I don't know why, but we did. And I think now it's is it mantra you get at that level, or is it? I know it's not air blade. Forget which one it is. Did he finish Imp? Yes, okay, he did. I'm just <laughs> sitting here like, crap, did I actually finish that? Alright, we'll get everybody's spell list here, and then we'll call it. Might fly around and see what we can find as far as, uh... Uh, oh, we need to do, um... Yeah, we need to do... Uh, the... Serpent Trench doing all of the left paths. Because there is a treasure we missed there. If I remember correctly, there's at least one treasure you get for going the left path. I could be wrong about that. I could very well be wrong about that. But we'll check it before we're done. So we're going to have to make an educated decision on who we're leaving behind here when we go 
of the floating continent, because we'd only take three characters. Um, I think it'll be Will, because I think we're going to need magic a lot on the floating continent. So we'll probably leave Will behind, and we'll take... Uh, We'll take Lorelei, Thomas, and Mac, and then meet up with Word on the uh, continent. And that makes sense because uh, Will is just throwing out um, slot mostly for AoE, and we're gonna have Fire Three Storm, so I'm pretty sure that we can handle that, and it's gonna be better than slot. Storm these fools. <laughs> also, uh, something that I, I decided I want to do um, soon is I'm going to make a video. I'm just going to have my face cam on. I'm going to talk uh, while we're doing it. But um, I want to do like a video game jukebox kind of thing where I'm going to play some of my favorite tracks from video games, and we're going to listen to them, and I'm going to talk about like why I like them so much. Uh, if you guys are interested, that'll be a different playlist, and it won't be updated too often. Uh, it's just something that sounds like a lot of fun to me, just talking about my video game experiences and why, what the music makes me remember and feel. And maybe you guys will get a kick out of it. Maybe it'll remind you of some of your favorite tracks in video games. And... If that's the case, I'll feel really good about it. Okay, so Max List is done, too. Um, we're going to put Zone Seek on him for Strength plus 2. Now we're just waiting on Lorelei to finish hers, which I think it's just Unicorn left. Yep, she's only got Unicorn left. Which that'll be done really, really soon. So the end of the episode's coming. Slowly but surely. And now really, she and Thomas are the only ones who need to be alive. Really, she's the only one who needs to be alive at the end of this. Yeah, so we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to do him right off. And hope that Terra doesn't get hit while we're casting it. Okay, yeah, perfect. Fifteen magic point thing, like the extra five over like intenders usually usual uh, ten is just enough to make it like super a lot freaking better. So one more fight with one, and we'll be done with our grind. We'll have full magic list for everybody, which would be cool. Um, to be honest, I probably should have like not even worried about it like, filling it totally and just got the skills that I need, but, eh, may as well. May as well fill up, everybody. I'm not gonna do it for every character that has a magic plan, of course. But just the, uh, the key characters that have a magic command. So she's going to want, uh, magic power also, if there's a place for it. Uh, actually, she could learn, she could use the HP plus 10, And he's done as well, so let's think of... Yeah, I gave him Zone Seek for Strength, didn't I? Yeah. And uh, Will should have one equipped just for leveling. Like, just to get something off of leveling. Um, let's see, what should he get, though? Stamina? Let's do Stamina plus two. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, so our grind is done. We'll go ahead and heal. And we'll run over and we'll, we'll save next to uh, Crescent Island and do the left side path of uh, 
Serpent Trench, and if there's nothing there, then I'll just reset, and that'll be the end of it. I'm pretty sure there's at least one treasure chest there, though. It is kind of a long walk back to the airship from there, but it's whatever. <laughs> you know. Just because Phantom Forest, Phantom Falls, all that stuff. But we'll go in and at least see if there was an item. I don't remember. Because usually the reason I come back here a second time is because I have Mog and I want him to learn the Water Rondo. Which uh, he learns going, the, uh, going through the Serpent Trench. Being Ope. I forgot about these guys. How they breathe down here? <laughs> yeah, the right paths are the default paths, so we definitely want to do left. <laughs> it could also be that this first left path doesn't take us to anything and that we have to turn right once first and then left the next time. And that actually takes us to something. This could just be the fast path to get to Nikia. I do not remember, so don't hold it against me. these preemptive attacks, man. We'll keep sandstorming these guys underwater somehow. It's that magic sand stuff. Moon sand. That's what it was. The stuff that freaking hardens underwater and then you lift it above the water and it's just sand again. That stuff was amazing. Yeah, this was just the fast path to Nikia. We don't want to worry about it. So then we'll do the right path and then the left path and see if that's where we missed a treasure. Starting to think that the way I went first is the only way that has treasure. But I could be wrong. That was the other thing. Okay, so... So being analogous to reality in video games really limits you. So that was another thing that FF7 kind of messed with. Like, there was a lot of things that didn't make sense still, obviously, because it's a video game. But, like, you can never have a stage like this in any new Final Fantasy. Like, you really couldn't. This makes no sense that you can somehow fight underwater and that you can fly through it. Like, they kind of did it with the underwater materia in 7, but it's like, really for only one fight, and is a super boss fight. Like, this, is, this kind of a stage can't be done now. Because it's too... Even that kind of a thing with FF7 really couldn't be done. They'd have to be too realistic with it, and you would lose the, the fun of it. I don't know. I'm still just ranting. <laughs> I think this is the same path. Just now we get to pick left, too. I don't think I missed anything down here, so... Yeah, 
this looks like the same path. This is the thing that had Gigabolt, right? Oh, underwater Chocobos! He trained them to go underwater, too. Ooh, Gigabolt's a death attack. Wonderful. Yeah, this is Nikia again. Okay. So nothing missed in the certain Serpent Trench. So I can only think of one place to uh, cut this off, since we're going to the floating continent immediately in the next episode. That is the first thing we're doing. We're done with the World of Ruin. Or with the World of Balance, I should say. Um, there is one last thing. We need to go get our butts kicked by a guardian. Because I don't know, if, in the case of the randomizer, if that means that we can get Guardian as a rage. But we still want to get our butts kicked. Usually it's guarding the, the front. I guess we gotta walk all the way up to get it. Oh, you know what they probably did? They probably removed it, so in case you miss something here, you can come back. That's cool. There's nothing extra here, right? We can sit at the table. I can't believe they left all this food out. It's gonna rot, man. Alright. I wish we could sit on Gestal's throne. We can only, like, straddle it. <laughs> Okay, let's get the crap out of here. Why do I always go that way? Alright. Down. Get out of here. Is this lady still here? Nah, she peaced out. She's like, nah. Done with this joint. This is the place that we're stopping. In Albrook, which is in total shade of the floating continent. How can an island float in the sky? There's a lot of reasons why, dude. Alright, this is where we're stopping, and I will catch you guys next episode when we take on the floating continent. Oh boy. I have a feeling it's going to be tough. Either way, see you guys next time. Peace.